Okay, so now we're going to talk about the historical context in regards to the different Islamic dynasties that existed in um, d throughout this time period. And uh, the first and probably the most important dynasty during the, um, the between 661 and last just 750 CE is the Umayyad dynasty. So that's the earliest dynasty. And it was created after the assassination of Ali uh, and temporarily solved the problem of succession. And during this dynasty is where we see the large expansion of Islam to uh, go all the way up, you can see on the map, throughout the Saudi Arabian Peninsula into, um, into Iran and modern day Iraq, throughout North Africa and even up toward the north of Spain. So it's the largest and the earliest of the dynasties. And uh, Umayyads were among the most prominent of the Meccan merchants. And uh, their reputation and network of alliances helped bring stability to this community, the Islamic community. They established their capital in Damascus, which is in Syria. And that was more of a central location uh, so that they could uh, maintain better communication and control um, with their empire. And as they continued to conquer into Islamic territory, they would let local people continue with their own religious beliefs, but would require them to pay a special tax, and that caused deep resentment. It also ended up leading to people to convert, so they didn't have to pay that tax. They also had a casual attitude towards Islamic doctrine and became increasingly invested in living luxuriously, and that alienated devout Muslims. There was a rebellion that eventually brings that to an end in 750. Now, in regards to Muslim Spain, the prosperity of Muslim Spain is known as the Al-Andalus, A-N-D-A-L-U-S. And that illustrates the far-reaching effects of the long-distance trade during this region. Um, the prosperity is important, and the governors of the an were Umayyads, and they refused to recognize the dynasty that comes next, who are the Abbasids. Uh, the beginning in the 10th century, these governors said, they were caliphs in their own right, rather than governors subject to the Abbasid authority. So despite the political and, and diplomatic tensions in the al Angeles region, they participated actively in the commercial life of the Islamic world. Uh, this trade helped glorify the cities of Cordoba, Toledo, and Seville, and Cordoba being the main capital. Cordoba had more than 10 miles of lighted robes, a giant library, and free Islamic schools. And we're going to talk a lot about Cordoba as it's one of the mosques that we teach or that I teach for this. Uh, the uh, end of the caliphs came in the 10th century. So that's the end of the caliphate. Here's the Abbasids. Sorry about that. Um, they're definitely, like I said, are more co cosmopolitan, but they lasted from about, sorry, let's go there, 750 to 1258. After that, we have the Seljuks. Um, you know what? I need to go back to the Abbasids. It, it was established by Abu al-Abbas, who helped defeat the Umayyads, and Abu had been fighting the Umayyads for a while, and then he invited them to a dinner banquet for a peace meeting, and then he had his men slaughter the Umayyad dynasty um, members. For those of you who are Game of Thrones fans, think the Red Wedding. Um, the Abbasids were much more cosmopolitan than their predecessor. They allowed for non-Arab Persian, Egyptian, Mesopotamian, and others to rule in positions of prominence. Also, not a conquering dynasty like their predecessor, but they did uh, clash with the Chinese and the nomads and the Byzantines if they had infringed on their territory. Eventually, there was mismanagement of the resources of that empire, and that leads to weakness 
and then the Mongols eventually invaded and took over this region. Uh, then uh, the next three Islamic dynasties are considered Turkish ruling dynasties, and all three presided over expansive and prosperous societies until about the 17th century, and that's when it began to weaken. Uh, okay, so the Seljuk Turks, they were a pastoral tribe who drove into the Anatolia region. This area right here is known as the Anatolia region. And um, in 1071, and that's going to be the major factor in bringing about the Crusades. Despite the problem with the Crusades, and I'll talk about the Crusades when we get to the medieval Christian period um, for the next section, uh, the Seljuk period was relatively calm with prosperity in Persia. So Persia is more this region here. And um, at its peak, it ruled an empire from northern India to the Aegean Sea and allowed it to be connected to trade with China. This trade led to enormous wealth and prompted the development of industries like paper manufacturing, which previously had been imported from China. Then we have the Il Khanat from 1250 to 1330, began um, by Osman Bey, who wanted to become a Muslim religious leader. The Ottomans' location next to the Byzantine Empire allowed them ample opportunities to engage in a holy war. As warriors settled into frontier districts and pushed their boundaries forward, they took spoils and collected revenues that enriched the central government. This system required Christian families to contribute with young boys to become slaves of the Ottoman Sultan, who would be trained, learn Turkish, and convert to Islam. And then depending on their ability, they would enter either into the administration or into the military. Uh, the capturing of Constantinople, and at that point they changed the name to Istanbul, opened a new chapter into the Ottomans. Um, and now we see the Ottoman Empire between 1289 and 1923. Um, so they're conquering the people with strong military and weapons. And um, Mehmed the Conqueror presented himself not just as a warrior sultan, but as the true emperor of two lands, meaning both Europe and Asia. And he lays the foundation for a tightly centralized absolute monarchy to follow. Then we have uh, Suleiman the Magnificent, and he vigorously promotes Ottoman expansion into both Asia and Europe. Uh, under Suleiman, they conquered Baghdad, the Tigris and Euphrates River, in the north and the Balkan regions into Hungary, that was the rival of the Habsburg Empire, and the Ottomans also became a major naval power under him. And then the Ottoman Empire will collapse shortly after World War I. Uh, the Nasserid Sultanate is uh, the southern Iberian Peninsula. Iberian means Spain. You want to think of the Iberian Peninsula as the, the Spanish region. And uh, so northern Spain will eventually could be controlled by various Christian kingdoms, but the Islam is going to survive down here in the south. Uh, and that was um, concentrated um, by the Nasrids. And then next are the Safavid Empire. That's 1501 to 1722. And the Safavid recognizes the Shia form of Islam, which we talked about on the last, um, the last screencast. This was the center trade network that linked China, India, Russia, Southwest Asia, and the Mediterranean basin and concentrated on the, um, but it was concentrated pretty much where Iran is today, so the Iranian pl um, plateau. And it imposed the Shiite Islam over the Sunni population. And then the Mughals, the Mughal Empire um, from 1526 to 1858 is the Indian subcontinent. 
Arab armies began appearing in South Asia as early as 712 and brought Islam with them. It was conquered by Babur, who formed the Mughal dynasty, which is a, actually a Persian term for Mongol. And Babur was a Muslim prince said to have descended from the Mongols, defeated the remaining rulers of the Delhi Sultanate, and declared himself the ruler of India and established the Mughal Empire. Babur then took the Hindu king's territory. Akbar, Babur's grandson, ruled between 1556 and 1605 and created a centralized administrative structure, consolidated Mughal power through military campaigns, and began to lay the foundation for conquering Hindu southern India. Akbar had a policy of religious tolerance and encouraged a divine faith which viewed him as the emperor but also as the ruler common to all religions, ethnic and social groups of India. Under Akbar was the first great flowering of Mughal art and architecture. He took the throne at age 14 and ruled for about 50 years. Akbar presided over this period of openness and expansion. He created a centralized period of openness um, and he, I'm sorry he created a centralized administrative system with ministries that regulated various provinces of the empire. His military campaigns consolidated Mughal power in the new territories. He had a very inclusive policies tolerating religious differences and that helped stabilize the empire. He encouraged the translation of the Hindu Sanskrit texts outlawed a separate tax on the Hindus and uh, after him is uh, in 1659 to 1707 is there more on this? sorry let me go back uh, after him um, is Aurangzab who reversed the policy of religious toleration he destroyed Hindu temples and placed an extra tax on Hindus that encouraged rebellions and cracks within the empire. So the reason why we went through all these dynasties is to show that there are a lot of variations within the region, the region that was controlled during different time periods between the 600s to the 1700s is going to be uh, uh, variously controlled by different types of rulers um, and uh, it's going to last for quite a long time. Uh, so that's it for the historical context. The next one will be on uh, stylistic characteristic of, a, of Islamic art.